Hi everyone, it is February 3rd, 2018. I'm going to be passing along information to my subscribers who are parents with children in public school and my subscribers who are teachers in public school. It is now 12.22 a.m. Friday night and I Today, again, I passed by a school with, well, I'll, it's the same school that I pass a lot, but I want you to take a look. This is Hannah School. It's a middle school here in South Carolina. This is the school, and this is the tower, which you will see more closely in just a few seconds. It is tragic that children are subjected to a dangerous weapon when they enter public schools. Our public schools are no longer safe environments for children. This is the tower that is behind the school. It's on school property and it is very close to the football field. Football is very, very big, especially at Hanna, very big in a lot of states, in a lot of southern states. Arizona, I received pictures from a subscriber who has children who go to a public school, and I believe I did a video on it showing you the pictures of all of the cell towers. I think there are five cell towers on one, one school property, and it happens to be where her children go to school. This is the cell tower at Hannah Middle School in Anderson, South Carolina, and these cell towers emit extremely dangerous frequencies. They affect one's physical health, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, but the effect on children is far more intense than the effect on adults. Children are still developing, their brains, their skull, softer than a developed adult brain so their skulls, being softer, allow the frequencies to penetrate more easily into the brain of children. The physical effects from these frequencies, microwave frequencies, electromagnetic frequencies, are well documented in thousands of studies. But what we hear from the telecommunications industry and our governments is that they're safe. The frequencies are safe. And who produces the studies that say that these frequencies are safe? None other than the telecommunications industry. So the information that I'm going to pass along to you I really do hope that you circulate it. It is beyond belief that we do have parents and teachers who are very knowledgeable about these dangers. Some parents try to organize and have unfortunately not been able to reach other parents. And that tells me that the parent who won't even do the research to find out if these frequencies are dangerous, that tells me that that parent, there's something very wrong. That parent is not well because they won't do anything to protect their own children. And that means that that child is not only going into an unsafe environment in public schools, 
but then returns home to an unsafe environment at home. The teachers and the principals in these schools, the administrators are not protecting them, and neither are their parents. And as far as I'm concerned, the evidence is in. The evidence is in. So while we sit around, again, I'll say waiting for Trump to fix things. Trump is rolling out 5G. He's considered 5G technology a national security uh, issue. And he's helping the telecommunications industry roll out a far more dangerous technology than the technology that we are already suffering from, the 4G technology, the microwave, uh, the cell towers and the cell phones. So Trump is not going to do anything to protect the children. And that's why I have said, and I've kind of been saying it more and more, that the only ones who can change the environment in which you live in is you. That's it. You. You have to take action. National Association for Children and Safe Technology. Uh, I'm not going to go into um, a lot of the sites that I'm going to be showing you. You can click on the links below and check it out yourself. But the American Academy of Pediatrics, they have come out. The American Academy of Pediatrics tricks have come out and made policy statements in regards to this Wi-Fi, cell phones, cell towers on school property. And they have stated that the FCC has outdated radiation safety standards, that these frequencies are dangerous for infants, children, and adolescents. So the American Academy of Pediatrics was calling for action on the U.S. government's outdated radiation safety standards. If the American Academy of Pediatrics is coming out with a policy statement stating that these frequencies that children are subjected to that they're dangerous and still we have parents who are letting their infant children sit in front of cell phones or iPads, some tablet that emits frequencies. Infant skulls are so soft these frequencies are getting right into their brains. And these children, yes it is tragic that adults are doing this. It is abuse. It is neglect. It is horrifying. Horrifying. So getting back to this site here, and you know, I don't even know, did I bump into it or did somebody give me the link, pass along the link to me? If so, I want to thank that individual for sending along this link. Uh, my memory is shot. <laughs> so yes, uh, that is one of the dangers of these frequencies that we're all subjected to. You know, it's not just children who experience the adverse effects, but it's also adults, though children, they need adults to protect them. And we're doing. We have failed. We have failed to protect children considering all of the dangers now that they are exposed to. The vaccines, the chemtrail, the geoengineering, the spraying of dangerous toxins, the GMOs, psychiatric medications, but this video is focusing in on Wi-Fi in schools, the cell towers being on properties, and we have, wow, no right to do this to children. So, These are all the topics 
On this one site, smart meters, the science, Wi-Fi in schools, cell phone and screen addiction, uh, parents for safe technology, and an awful lot of information right here on this site. So please, please circulate it. Case law documents, um, articles, readings, videos. Okay. Um, I do want to bring your attention to a school in Finland finally won parents parents of an elementary school in southern Finland had gone through a very long struggle against the iPads and Wi-Fi based learning they couldn't prevent the installation of Wi-Fi hotspots but their struggle resulted in a compromise. In every classroom, there is a switch by which the radiation emitting hotspot can be turned off. It's unfortunate that one has to compromise when it relates to the health of children. But this is what these parents and teachers had to do. But it demonstrates that parents and teachers banded together to fight to try to make that elementary school environment more safe. And that's exactly what parents and teachers have to do. If you don't do it, then I'm sorry, you are How do you just ignore, how do you ignore the dangers that these children are subjected to Monday through Friday, hour after hour after hour with the Wi-Fi routers in their school classrooms? And some classrooms have not just one router, but several routers. And then they're staring at their iPads. And if you have knowledge about these dangers, I don't, I don't understand how this could just continue and continue and continue. So parents, teachers, click on the links below, read up on what other people have done, what they have achieved, find out how they did it and go for it. So, this is an article written by a doctor, Dr. Anthony Miller, World Health Organization expert. He says, waiting for the government to update their decades old regulations will be too late for the children currently being exposed to radio frequency radiation in your district's Classrooms, Wi-Fi networks in schools and cell towers on your school grounds could significantly increase the cancer risk in your community, in your children. It's not just cancer, but you can read up on all of his qualifications to speak on this subject. But he is a doctor, a, a uh, epidemiologist specializing in cancer, and Yes, he was on working groups of the World Health Organization International Agency for Research on Cancer. This is why he wrote this letter. I am writing to ensure you have accurate information about the research on radio frequency radiation and health as I understand that Montgomery County Public School District in Maryland, I believe, is addressing the health risks of radio frequency radiation and posting information to parents and staff. In 2011, a working group of IARC, which is the International Agency for Cancer, classified radio frequency radiation as a class 2b carcinogen, a possible 
human carcinogen. That was in 2011. In 2013, the same agency detailed the evidence that provided the scientific basis for the classification. The epidemiology, um, epidemiological, epidemiological, Jesus, studies that looked at long-term cell phone exposures found an increased risk of brain cancer. The IARC classification is intended to apply to all radio frequencies from zero kilohertz to 300 gigahertz, clearly including Uh, the 2.45 gigahertz commonly used for wireless networks in schools, specifically wireless laptops, wireless tablets, and Wi-Fi access points. Current U.S. exposure guidelines for radio frequency energy radiation levels were developed three decades ago to avoid heat, and they did not consider the unique vulnerability of children to this type of radiation. FCC compliance is therefore not proof of safety. Many studies have shown that RF radiation exposures at levels that do not induce heat can damage the nervous system, impair sleep, hearing, and reproductive health, and increase the risk of cancer. Children absorb radio frequency radiation deeper into their bodies and brain than adults and they are far more vulnerable than adults to adverse effects of radio, um, radio frequency radiation. And he goes on to speak very firmly how there is much research, accumulated research, indicating oxidative stress, neurological, immune, and reproductive damage that occurs from exposure to radio frequency radiation. And children exposed to radio frequency radiation can cause infertility. So, waiting for the government to update their decades old reg regulations will be too late for the children currently being exposed to this radiation. Wi-Fi networks in schools and cell towers on your school grounds could significantly increase the cancer risk in your community, significantly increase a whole a, a myriad of diseases, illness, sickness, and not only the children, but adults. I urge you to educate your school community about the health risks from cell phones and wireless devices so they can take simple precautions to protect their health. I urge you to act thoughtfully now to reduce wireless exposures in classroom and choose safer corded non-wireless technology for internet connections to ensure a safe school environment for children, teachers, and staff. And the only way that children will uh, be safe is if parents, teachers, administrators, principals get Wi-Fi out of those schools and I'm telling you, waiting for somebody else to do it, it is not going to happen. Now, a review on electromagnetic fields and the reproductive system. Um, these, this is a review of studies already conducted, published. So I get incensed when I hear mainstream media reporters, or other scientists claim 
that it's safe and there are no studies out there that show adverse effects of these frequencies, they are lying through their teeth. So I not only suggest that you click on the links that I will provide in the description box, but that you print out, make hard copies of all of the studies so that you have them in front of you so that you can go to your school and give copies of the studies to those responsible for putting Wi-Fi in your schools um, and that you can find out you know from somebody in the school or an admi administrator um, but it it usually comes down to the school board the school board has made the decision to put dangerous technology into the schools and don't let these school board members bully you or behave in a way that treats you as if you have no right. You have every right. And frankly, it's not just a right. It's your responsibility, parents and teachers. It is absolutely your responsibility to keep children safe. And they are not safe going to school. EMFs can have devastating effects on tissue with high concentrations of electrons and ions. EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies, microwave frequencies, that cause changes in the behavior of cells and tissues alter the function of the cardiovascular system and bone marrow. Electromagnetic fields can have several different effects on cellular components, including disorders of cell proliferation and differentiation, damaged DNA in cells, chromosomal abnormalities, blood disorders, birth defects, and various mutations, including those associated with long-term exposure to EMFs. Children now have long-term exposure. They go to schools with Wi-Fi. They come home to homes with Wi-Fi. They're staring at cell phones. It is the job of the adult to protect children. Under the influence of, those, of these fields, the balance of your central nervous system and the hormonal and respiratory systems become weak, resulting in decreased activity of the mentioned organs. And a declassified 1976 Defense Intelligence Agency report showed that military personnel exposed to non-thermal microwave radiation non-thermal. The telecommunications comes out with studies and they, they claim that it is only the thermal radiation that we need to be concerned with. And hell, if you have Wi-Fi in your home and you're not being cooked like a microwave, you don't feel the heat, the heat coming from your Wi-Fi routers, that means it's safe it is not safe and the thermal effects uh, many people have experienced their body temperature suddenly it's it's well a lot of people describe it as a hot flash and they don't know where it came from it's coming from your Wi-Fi routers or the cell towers or whatever is emitting microwave radiation your smart meters but the non-thermal microwave radiation, our government, our defense intelligence agencies have known for decades how dangerous this technology is. The non-thermal microwave radiation that our government knows, what are the symptoms? Headaches, fatigue, dizziness, irritability, sleeplessness, depression, anxiety, forgetfulness, 
lack of concentration. A 2015 study showed that 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi may be one of the major risk factors for brain tumors and other neurodegenerative diseases like MS. Another 2050, uh, 2015 paper showed that polarized electromagnetic frequencies, man-made, coming from cell towers and cell phones and smart meters and Wi-Fi, was much more active biologically than non-polarized electromagnetic frequencies. Another paper showed that rabbits experienced heart arrhythmia and increased blood pressure when exposed to 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. That's the Wi-Fi we are all subjected to. That's the Wi-Fi we are using. A long-term study conducted by a Swedish scientist on, like, glioma, sorry, and acoustic neuroma brain tumors showed that radio frequency is carcinogenic. And that scientist called for radio frequency to be labeled as an IARC class 1 carcinogen, recommending urgent revision to safety guidelines. A 2011 study showed that radiation from cell phones in areas next to the antenna increased the metabolism of glucose in the brain. Increased metabolism of glucose is associated with can uh, cancer. The study showed that biological changes occur at levels lower than the current FCC guidelines. And men, you can take a look at what happens to your genital, genital system by clicking on the link below. There's a lot of information. I'm sorry that this is long. I do hope that you circulate the information. But this information is very, very important. Listen, I hear from a lot of you. You are suffering. I read an article about a teenager. I did a video on Kafka Winston World. A 15-year-old UK teenager took her life. Took, she killed herself because of all of the symptoms she was experiencing attending her school. Now, this... Um, this 1976 Defense Intelligence Agency, PDF, it's 35 pages, biological effects of electromagnetic radiation, radio waves, microwaves, everything, everything that we are, that, that has become our 24-7 environment. This 35-page paper, well, you'll get to see all of the effects that our government knows and that doctors are really benefiting from because so many the exponential increase in all diseases and illnesses and syndromes and chronic physical pain has been quite profitable for the pharmaceutical industry for the medical profession for the mental health profession because of these frequencies that affect our emotions and our mental state. But in that PDF, the Defense Intelligence Agency report, what does it say? If the more advanced nations of the West are strict in the enforcement of stringent exposure standards, there could be unfavorable effects on industrial output and military function. The Eurasian communist countries could, on the other hand, give lip service to strict standards, but allow their military to operate 
without restriction and thereby gain the advantage in electronic warfare techniques and the development of anti-personal personnel applications. Should subsequent research result in adoption of the Soviet standard by other countries, industries whose practices are based on less stringent safety regulations could be required to make costly modifications in order to protect workers. Wow. Wow. So, let's not tell the public how dangerous these frequencies are because it will be costly to the telecommunications industry. They, they'll have to protect the public. So we'll lie to them, ruin their health, and just watch the telecommunications industry roll in the dough. Recognition of a safe standard could also limit the application of new technology by making the commercial e exploitation of some products unattractive because of increased cost imposed by the need for additional safeguards. Huh. All right. Um, our government is not there to protect us. Not at all. I will link below to it all, uh, including this report. Now, this is another site that has a tremendous amount of information. I'm afraid that Magna, Magna, Magda have us, has perhaps not updated this site. It seems that it stops at 2016. It doesn't matter. All of the information on her site is very important, especially for children. She has a category on her site, a page, schools, that has an awful lot of very important information. The American Academy of Environmental Medicine came out in 2012. Now think about the saturation of the cell phone towers and the Gwen towers and cell phones and, and all of the gadgets that children are using in schools. Think about the proliferation of all of this technology. So this was written in 2012 and now we're like six years, six years later being bombarded with more frequencies. Think about 5G being rolled out. And 5G, those antennas that will be, you talk about proliferation, they will be all over because of the wave's length. So they need to deploy cell antennas if I'm not mistaken, I think it's like 50 feet apart. Perhaps that's a little bit too short. I might be wrong, but these cell antennas for 5G that are putting out far more dangerous frequencies in the millimeter wave spectrum, they will be low the instruments will be low on, on street lights and utility poles, and you will be walking where these antennas can emit dangerous frequencies, where your body will be close to them. You will, there will be no escape, no escape whatsoever. They're even installing them outside people's homes. So, forgetting about 5G, just 4G, 2012, 
The board of the American Academy of Environmental Medicine opposes the installation of wireless smart meters in homes and schools based on a scientific assessment of the current medical literature. Chronic exposure to wireless radio frequency radiation is a preventable environmental hazard that is sufficiently well documented to warrant immediate preventative public health action. Wi-Fi in schools. Civil action. Morrison versus Portland Public Schools. Now, I don't know the outcome of this case. This was also in 2012, but I'm bringing it to your attention because the experts that testified in this case, Barry Trower, Curtis Bennett, Dr. David Carpenter, Lloyd Morgan, Magda Havis, and David Savitz, Savitz, all experts. That's why they were called to testify in this case. And by clicking on these amended decl declarations and the addendums, the second amended declaration, you will find the actual declaration sent to the court of these experts. Here's Barry Trowers. It's 26 pages of information about how dangerous Wi-Fi is, particularly for children. And here, the technology and the adverse health effects. Um, cell death, diseases of the blood, interference to bone marrow, brain tumors, DNA damage, altered calcium level in cells, reduction in nighttime melatonin, suppression of the immune system, arthritis, rheumatism, skin problems, lymphatic diseases, vaginal discharge, vascular system disease, tinnitus, leukemia, childhood cancer, sleep problems, mental problems involving depression, irritability, memory loss, difficulty in concentrating, headache, diseases, fatigue, suicidal tendencies, miscarriage, infertility, heart attack, arrhythmia. It's very upsetting to me when we have mountains of evidence of this danger. And yet, we can't seem to get it out, even just out of the schools. So this is a letter of Magda Havasis that was updated. She was asked to update this letter. So she updated it in 2012. The original letter, it was an open letter to parents, teachers, school boards regarding Wi-Fi networks and schools. And the letter, the original, was 2009. So she updated it with more current information about the World Health Organization, recognizing electromagnetic sensitivity, recognizing this microwave electromagnetic smog is a possible carcinogen. And the World Health Organization comes out and says that. And yet, it seems that almost no one cares. No one cares about their own health today. Radio frequency is generated by Wi-Fi routers, cell phones, mobile phones, wireless baby monitors, wireless games, and toys that are remote controlled smart meters, some home security systems, and antennas that support cell phone, broadcast radio and television, as well as radar, all dangerous, especially wireless baby monitors that parents will put right next to the infant lying in their crib. 
um, you can click on the hyperlinks here to find out what the Parliamentary Assembly Council of Europe their resolution said about the potential dangers of electromagnetic fields and their effect on the environment. Many of these organizations have come strongly out and said Wi-Fi should not be in children because children are far more vulnerable than adults to the effects. But once again, symptoms, uh, cognitive dysfunction, mood disorders, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, and the same symptoms that I read before. The International Electromagnetic Field Alliance. The scientific panel recognizes that the body of evidence on electromagnetic frequency requires a new approach to protection of public health, the growth and development of the fetus and of children, argues for strong preventative actions. New biologically based public exposure standards are urgently needed to protect public health worldwide. Here they are, and here is the original letter that Dr. Havis wrote in 2009. Children's sensitivity. Um, a review of electromagnetic fields and the reproductive system. I didn't mean to go to that, I'm sorry. Uh, the implications of nonlinear biological oscillations on human electrophysiology for electro hypersensitivity and multiple chemical sensitivity. This is a very important opening for this review study. The informational content of Earth's electromagnetic signaling, signaling is like a set of operating instructions for human life. These environmental cues are dynamic and involve exquisitely low inputs, low intensities, of critical frequencies with which all life on Earth evolved. These natural frequencies, circadian and other temporal biological rhythms depend on these fluctuating electromagnetic inputs to direct, to direct gene expression, cell communication, and metabolism, neural development, brainwave activity, neural synchrony, a diversity of immune functions, sleep and wake cycles, behavior and cognition. Oscillation is also a universal phenomenon and biological systems of the heart, brain and gut are dependent on the cooperative actions of cells that function according to principles of nonlinear coupled biological oscillations for their synchrony. The natural frequencies resonate and help us function well. When they are interfered with with man-made frequencies, the human body breaks down as well as all life forms. They are dependent on exquisitely timed cues for the environment at vanishingly small levels. Altered informational content of environmental cues can swamp natural electromagnetic cues 
and result in dysregulation of normal biological rhythms that direct growth, development, metabolism, and repair mechanisms. Think about the children in schools. Think about what we are doing to their growth. Pulsed electromagnetic fields, which is what Wi-Fi does, smart meters do, cell phones do, cell towers do. Pulsed electromagnetic fields and radio frequency radiation can have the devastating biological effects of disrupting homeostasis and desynchronizing normal biological rhythms that maintain health. I don't know what is wrong with so many adults today that don't care about their own health. And I have witnessed it. I have spoken to adults. They experiencing either MS or some other medical problem. And there they are in their homes with Wi-Fi. And I have said, you need to do the research on Wi-Fi because the Wi-Fi may be the cause of your condition and or making your condition worse. Did they care to do that research? No. So convenience today trumps health. But adults who don't protect children. Now, I don't know what to say about them. I don't know. But there's something very wrong with them. So please circulate this information. If you are a parent with a child in public school, I really hope that you circulate this information to other parents that you know that have children in the school with your child, that you bring this information to the attention of the administrators, the principal, and the teachers in your schools and demand that you have a meeting regarding the dangers of Wi-Fi in your child's school and demand that they remove the Wi-Fi, remove the cell towers from school property and get wired because there is a choice. You can have wired internet access. You don't have to saturate your children in a dangerous environment. It, it, it doesn't come down to, well, if they don't have Wi-Fi, that means that they'll be disadvantaged. No, just ground those frequencies. It will make that school far safer for your children. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you need to do research. We don't have to have Wi-Fi. We can wire, hardwire our internet access with an ethernet cable and so can the schools. The schools are doing this because they're collecting money. The cell phone towers on school property, they're leasing public, public property you pay your property taxes and that those taxes go to the schools in your district? And it's public property that they are leasing out to the telecommunication company that's leasing that property for their cell tower. That school is making money and that is why they're doing it and money should never trump a child's health. Links are below in the description box.